Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome back to Opolis Inc. Oh geez, I just started the recording and it's nighttime. Lovely. All right. Let's do this first and then we can get into mechanism generators. So as alluded to in the last episode, we do need to get a fission reactor so we can get nuclear waste, so we can run it through the rotary condensator to get the liquid nuclear waste so that we can get one of the quests in the quest line. That's just this nuclear waste bucket. So I, I'm guessing that we're going to have to take some radioactive damage to get this quest because this stuff is uh, not nice. Uh, but anyways, we need we do need to get that to get this irradiated bacterial mulch, which is uh, achieved in one of two different ways. You can use dirt with irradiated bacterial sludge, or you can put the draconic bacterial mulch, which is in one of the previous episodes or previous quest lines that I never did, like in the farming quest lines. I just never did this one, but then that's with the nuclear, you put that with the nuclear waste that we're going to get today, and that will give us this irradiated bacterial mulch stuff, which then leads to this mutated supercell, which I have no idea what's going on there, but we'll see. But um, obviously at this point in the pack, none of these supreme things are, uh, are actually... Um, in the game just yet until they fully determine if they're required or not um, so I'm just doing this just to as an exercise for this stuff and I guess you know while I was here and doing the mechanism generators anyways I was going to take a look at getting the mecha suit as well so Probably won't be getting it today. It'll probably take a little while to get enough um, waste to get this polonium stuff that we need to get it. But, you know, other than that, I guess the only other tricky one is the HDPE, which I need to get ethene before we can get into that stuff. But, um, and substrate is, there's a couple of rabbit holes in getting that HDPE, but that's for another day. Today we're going to talk about the generators. So I will put in the description a link to a great video and in through that video there's a couple of um, links in a wiki that will help you out greatly for building some of these on your own. Um, what I've built here definitely like I said in the last episode not minimum size but these are definitely on the smaller size of the multi blocks that you put together for fission. Um, this is uh, basically a uh, five by five. These are five by fives, so three by three on the interiors, and uh, then the differing heights according to the needs that we uh, that we set out in there. So one of the, I guess the, we'll go, we'll just go over the basics here because I don't want to get too much in depth into it in this. Um, playthrough, but you want to start off with the turbine and then build your reactor according to the specs that your turbine can handle, I guess is the best way to put it. So the, the wiki page said the best bang for your buck was a 5x5x9, five by five by so that's how I built this. And then if we, oh, we can't... Uh, we can't look at the structure because I tore it apart a little bit to explain it. But basically you need the entire base of this turbine casings and then all of the outer edges have to be the turbine casings for the, um, for the turbine. And that's exactly the same for the fission reactor as well. So you need the fission reactor casings, the entire base has to be the casing, and then all of the outsides. Then the Walls can be a mixture of reactor glass, uh, reactor ports, or you could use casings on the outside as well if you're feeling rich, I guess, or if you don't want to see what's going on on the inside. That I thought would attach. That's not attached either. Oh, because it's not put together. That's why. 
I did take it apart a little bit um, here just to uh, just so that we can go over the uh, workings of it. So in the middle there, let's look at turbine first. So we've got the turbine casings on the outside along with the structural glass goes into this one and then the reactor has reactor glass so just note that there's two different kinds of glass there. Then in the middle we have the turbine rotors, I have five of them, and on the turbine rotors are the turbine blades. So two each, two blades for each of the rotors, so I have ten turbine blades. Then on top of the turbine blades goes the rotational complex. And then on top of the complex has to go an electromagnetic coil. And then you need um, one electromagnetic coil for every four rotors in your turbine. So because I have ten rotors, I needed two and a half. So rounded up, I needed to have make sure I had... Oops, I need to make sure that that's out for now. Uh, three electromagnetic magnetic coils in there. So on the level where you put down your rotational complex, the entire rest of that level has to be filled with pressure dispersers. And then similarly on the level where your electromagnetic coils go, the rest of the interior has to be saturating condensers. So pressure dispersers there and saturating condensers there. Let's put this guy back together. And as you saw before, when I put this in, we got the red particle effect, which means it's a valid structure. And the last piece that we do need are turbine vents. Now, the vents are going to be one of the limiting factors. The rotors are the other limiting factor that you can have in your uh, turbine. Um, but so uh, this level here, so anywhere above where you've got the pressure dispersers and the uh, coil, rotational complex that's where you can have these vents or you can have glass if you don't have enough material to make all the vents or you just don't need all the vents to do what you want to do and then uh, the other thing yeah you need uh, two turbine valves um, so one of the valves is going to accept the hot steam from the reactor which is what pushes the fan around. And then the other um, valve is for getting the energy out. Then the uh, return of the, um, the steam, which you know condenses down to water, the return goes out through the turbine vents. And uh, interestingly enough, we don't need the, because these push the liquid out, you don't need this set to an input with the configurator. It should push automatically uh, back to the fission reactor. The reactor is a little bit simpler in that all that you need on the interior are the... Uh, fission fuel assemblies and the control rod assemblies. So you need fission fuel assemblies going up and then at the top behind there is a fission is the control rod so just needed uh, with this three by three setup here on the inside I just needed five control rods and then I have um, 20 of the fission fuel assemblies or sorry one two three four times five yeah 20 of those control rod assemblies the math on how to get there is a little bit interesting into itself in that each um, fission fuel assembly, when it's running at maximum, which is one millibucket of nuclear material per tick, um, heats up 20, 000, or 20 buckets or 20,000 millibuckets of water at a time. So what we do is how you figure out how many control rod you need is dependent on the size of your um, turbine and um, your max flow rate. So we can flow at 384,000 millibuckets per tick. 
So we just divide this 384 by 20, and that gives us that number uh, comes out to, I think it's 19.2. So that's why I built 20 over here in there, just so, um, you know, it's, it's safer to go less. That way, if you're running at maximum, you can never um, get too much capacity for what this can handle. But uh, I built mine a little bit bigger so we can actually test what uh, or show what goes wrong with things in there. So aside from the reactor casings and the reactor glass, we do need four input valves or reactor ports. And I guess, uh, yeah, two of them will be inputs. Then we'll need a... Um, a coolant output, a hot coolant output, and a radioactive waste output as well. Now let's just sleep away the night so we don't get interrupted. And I'll demonstrate over here. I left this one unlocked. So if we just shift and right click with it, so this light blue is uh, output coolant. The green color is input, and that can be input of the um, nuclear material. What's it called? Nope. Uses. Fissile fuel. So the input can be either fissile fuel or water. And then this is the um, output waste is the yellow color there. To get the initial water into the reactor, I just used one of the mechanism pumps here. Um, just note that I did put eight speed, um, uh, eight speed upgrades into it. And then that took about 10 minutes or so to get the 17 and a half million millibuckets into there. I tried. <laughs> When I first started out with uh, no upgrades in there, it was it probably would have taken it three or four hours to fill up. But with the eight upgrades, it went fairly quickly and not too bad. And then I since uh, unconnected it because what we're going to have here is a closed loop. Basically, all of the hot steam will come out of the re reactor, go into the turbine, um, spin the turbine blades, create power, and then cool down, and then come back into the reactor via the vents over here and this one. So the different pipings that we need, we need a mechanical pipe. So this is the one that holds the liquids, fluids. And uh, most of the others are pressurized tubes which hold chemicals. This is kind of what tripped me up in the um, in the last episode when we were doing the um, trying to get things into the solar neutron activator out of the rotary condensators and stuff because I didn't re it used to say that the gas it used to say gases but it's now called chemicals so things have kind of changed a little bit from the old days but. Um, the elite pressurized tube now does chemicals and not gases. Now, the thing that we have to pay attention to is this max flow rate. So we have to have enough capacity. So see the capacity number on the ultimate mechanical pipes? Um, equal or greater to than the max flow capacity there for it to work properly otherwise that we just can't get the, the steam out or the water out of each of those things so with the ultimate mechanical pipes these have a capacity of 128 so to get up to that 384 number we needed to have at least three of them Right, but I built these a little bit different. I built or I built these a little bit further away just for chunk purposes so that this this the this and the induction matrix are in their own chunk and then the uh, 
reactor and this processes here is is in its own chunk it is one of the things that it does tell you in the uh, that other guide there is to be careful of to not to put these in chunks that might not be loaded but uh, I have these both loaded and for or both protected and now force loaded so we shouldn't have any troubles with that there uh, this one does need to be oh did not mean to do that that needs to be input only and this needs to be yeah on pull so that needs to be on pull so that it will pull the steam out over to there and this uh, universal cable uh, the universal cable here has a capacity of 409,000 fe per tick whereas this turbine will have a max production of 548 so I could go up to the ultimate version but it it's not hard for me I've already done all of this stuff because some of these machines already took like atomic alloys so I had that all built um, but this does have an energy buffer of 1.44 billion fe anyways so even if we're not pulling out fast enough, we've got a little bit of leeway to go out of there. So the last thing I guess to talk about. Oh yeah, so I do need to get another pressurized pipe here. The tricky part about this one is because I want to get some of the polonium for my mecha suit boots. Polonium comes from reacting the liquid polonium with water and the PRC along with some fluorite dust. Um, and then the polonium is made by processing the nuclear waste through the solar neutron activator. Now, we can store the polonium inside this radioactive waste barrel that won't decay. But if you didn't want to go for polonium and you wanted to get rid of the radioactive waste, you can store it in radioactive waste barrels and it will decay at a certain rate um, and just, you know, go away into thin air after, you know, a few, depending on how much you have in them, I guess. Um, but uh, that's, that's how you would typically deal with the radioactive waste is you would just put it into the barrels if you weren't gonna use it for polonium or plutonium or any of the other things that uh, the next steps in mechanism so to speak so let's go now to the induction matrix this is a way to store power and this is pretty much exactly the same as the other um, multi-blocks there so you do need casing I guess the one thing that makes this one different is that the entire bottom didn't need to be casing. So I could have one structural glass on the bottom there. And then uh, typically you want two induction ports on it. One for the power to come in and then one place so that you can get the power out of it. And then inside um, the uh, induction matrix itself, you can have any number of induction cells which store the power so the the very smallest one the basic starts at 3.2 billion fe with a b and then they go up to you know um trillions of fe if you go up to the top tier the other thing that you need in there is an induction provider and this is what limits how much power can come into and go out of your induction matrix. So in mine, I've got uh, an advanced induction cell so that I can store 25 giga. And I just have the basic induction provider in there because I was lazy and just that's the one that I made. So we really can't even handle that 1.22 million. We can only do 102,000 uh, FE per tick coming in or out of it so to speak but anyways i think i've blabbed on enough about that if you've got more questions refer to the other video and the wiki that was a great help to me in building 
all of this stuff to what I thought I needed to do. Um, let's uh, pretty much jump into it, I guess. Like, I'll need... I'll need this guy. I will need to provide power to these two machines. Why wouldn't you go in between like that on the first try? There we go, power and power, that's good. And I wanted to unhook the solar neutron activator for now because we want to get that bucket of liquid first, which I guess I should probably also do this. Get an empty bucket. Clean up the top here. I think I'm all ready to go. I'm a little bit nervous, I won't lie, but we'll see what happens. We can always, um, well, you always should start off low and then work your way up, right? So um, clicking this button over here on the stats, um, the by default when you build it, the rate limit is set to 0 0.1 millibuckets per tick. And then the maximum burn rate is dependent on the number of control or um, rods that you have in your machine. So because I have 20, I can go up to 20. But like I said, I think the maximum I would do would be 19.2 because that's the flow rate capacity there it might even be 19.1 something and it just got rounded up to 19.2 i forget uh exactly the numbers that it worked out to but probably just leave it at a round number like 15 or something like that just to burn up the little bit of um, radioactive material that or the fissile fuel that we are going to get um, just as a note that this, the demon cores, isn't the only way to get fissile fuel. You can also go through the huge rabbit hole that is the isotopic centrifuge to get um, fissile fuel from uranium hexafluoride, which is made from hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide. These all have their own process to put together. It'd be like another... 10 or 15 machines over here if we wanted to constantly produce uh, fissile fuel. But for the quick, easy, and dirty solution to get this quest line done, we're just going to use our reactor core. I guess I need to have this on pull. So we now have 4,000 millibuckets of fuel in the tank. Oh. And turn her on. Shush. I'm trying to talk to these nice people. So this is running. Um, it's got a heat rate. Things are going. There's probably some steam coming in over here. Oh, maybe not yet. Maybe it's just running so slow that nothing can come in. Because we are... Our water is going down, right? Because we are heating it up. Oh, this needs to be on pull too. There we go. No, that doesn't need to be on pull. What am I doing? That's an input. Derping on camera here again. Maybe this is the wrong tube, but it should be the right one. Get steam out of here. The steam is building in there. It's not getting pulled out. Maybe, I don't think the steam has to be the this one, fluid one. Am 
right? And there's no other types of pipes. Almost absolutely positive it has to be. Oh, this needs to be an output. That's an input. That's why. Output coolant. That'll work. Oh, and nuclear waste got into there. So now we are going to have a problem. We are going to have radioactive issues here because the nuclear waste that's in there I guess I guess let's take this guy there breaking that should have yeah I'm pretty sure it did cause See, there's uh, green particles in the air there now. So now we have a problem. But we've got it working finally. So it's a less of a problem because our reactor is not going to melt down on us. Yeah, we've got different colors going on. You can see all these particles. That was because this had the uh, waste in it. And I broke it. And that released it into the atmosphere. So we should have a debuff, which I guess I just can't see right now. But that's fine. Anyways, let's start ramping this guy up. So let's go from 0.1 to, let's say, uh, 2. So that went down a little bit, but now is kind of holding steady. Because yet the water's coming back in there just fine. And over here we are producing 57,000 Fe per tick there. Oh. Does this taste like metal to you? Take damage from radiation poisoning. Yes, yes we did. So I don't know how long this is going to last because it was just such a small amount. I wasn't super concerned about it, but uh, it's going to be a little bit annoying for a while. And this is starting to slowly fill up. We got 76 million Fe in there now. see the particles over here but the color is still there in the world right oh look my absorption hearts came back why is this one here Was it the entire world? <laughs> Can't have it here. Well, I guess I'm still sick from getting it in the overworld. Seem to have stopped taking the ticking damage. We did 
did have the particles somewhere along the way here. Particles, particles. So they do stop about there. But now you see why I didn't build this machine over by, or actually right in my base, because I knew that if something went wrong, we'd have to deal with that. We've gone through all of the fuel. We don't have any more steam. So all the steam stopped. So this is not really producing anything anymore. 1.2. We ended up with 114 million FE out of that one demon core. And now I do want to pull... Oh, waste tank is empty. 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 So where did all of the waste go? Did all of the waste end up coming out? Well, no, because we went in... Oh, well. We'll have to wait until this disperses, I guess, and then retry that. I've got lots and lots of things to do, so I'm not too worried about it. Even if that takes, you know... A few days for it to to go away yeah now I am curious oh the waste is in the tube okay why is it saying there's two tubes connected Back or right? I'm going to say it's back. Oh, because this isn't on pull. Oh, but it's in there, so it didn't need to be on pull. Okay, so I'm guessing I have to have this rotary condensator. I think this side's probably got to be facing that way. Nope, that was not it. Oh, that's items, right? Fluids? No, it needs to be chemicals. Oh, it's giving me hunger. well as doing damage. Wondered why my hunger was going down so fast. Is it not nighttime? Am I that sick now? All right, on between episodes, I will have to mess around with that rotary condensator.
It's n oh, maybe it's because it's in the wrong mode. This might be in deconcentrating mode. And I need it in condensing mode. That could be the issue. All right, back into the green juice. Really? Oh, I couldn't sleep because I was taking damage. Ah, that's why. Not that I really fear mobs at all. Oh, there's another one. All right. You... There we go. Figured it out, finally. Kidding me? There, and then I'll figure out how to get the nuclear waste out of there so that I can put it into my neutron activator. Did want to slap that into there so I'm not carrying it around on me. And I'm guessing chemical tank. back into the pipe and now it's in the solar neutron activator I did set this config so the output should go to the bottom so as soon as we can have some sunshine which is not possible right now because I don't have a sleep charm if I had a sleep charm it might work but can't pass time while we're taking all this damage. All right, we got it all figured out. I got done what I wanted to do. I hope you all enjoyed, especially with the derp and don't derp like I derped. I should have waited for that solar neutron activator to process the nuclear waste into polonium and then put that polonium into the waste barrel and then picked it up. Maybe. That still might not have worked. That still might have caused the leakage. But anyways, I'm going to cut this one off there. I appreciate you all for bearing with me through the derpiness. And uh, yeah, we will see you in the next one. Bye.